Hello, my name is Michael Roberts. I am Choctaw and Chickasaw from Ada, Oklahoma. There are several stories that I, I was told about the men's fancy. I've talked to my elders from, from Oklahoma, from various tribes. What I've come up with is uh, taking a little bit from each one. And it's all of, uh, comes back to the horse, you know, that uh, the dance coming from the horse people. The way that I was told is that uh, many, many years ago, uh, we would do the war dance to prepare ourselves either for battle or coming back from battle to showcase what we actually did in battle. And that war dance was something sacred. Our, our people held that that act of going to war very, very high. During the time of the Indian Removal Act, uh, many tribes were being pushed into Oklahoma. And during this time as well, a lot of our ways were being taken away. And uh, during this time as well, there, there were books that were being written about the Native American. And in these books, they portrayed us to be savages or more like animals and human beings. And these books, they were sent off into the big cities of Washington and Philadelphia and overseas and to, to, uh, to Paris and London. These people that read these books, they wanted to see this way of life before it was all gone. So a man by the name of Pawnee Bill and another man by the name of uh, Buffalo Bill started these Wild West shows. They came to the Indian Territory and they picked up young people and they took them to show them off in this circus type atmosphere. Well, whenever the dancers came out to dance, the dance that they did was something very modest. It wasn't anything like what the people read about. And the people that came to see the shows, they were very disappointed in what they seen. So the creators of that Wild West show came to the natives and they said, we want you guys to do that war dance. We want to see that savage. So uh, our people that said, well, we, we can't do that. that. That war dance is set aside just for participating in battle. So they had to come up with something different. Well, many, many years before, uh, uh, whenever we were being pushed into Oklahoma, there were two tribes, the Comanches from the southeast, or from the southwest, and the Poncas from, uh, from what is now Nebraska. And the Poncas were being pushed down into Oklahoma. And when these two tribes, they met on the battlefield, the Comanches, they had horses from battles with the conquistadors. And this horse was a huge asset for the people. And whenever they fought the Poncas, they completely, pretty much completely annihilated the Poncas. Almost killed them off because they had that use of the horse. But before, before they were completely annihilated, they, they wanted to make a truce, you know, become, become brothers or allies or whatever, you know. So the Poncas, they said, you know, uh, we want to take you as a relative. And out of this uh, adoption ceremony, the Poncas, they gave bows and arrows to the Comanches as a gift. The Comanches, they already had those bows and arrows, but it's kind of like how we do exchanges nowadays with blankets and stuff. Well, the Comanches, out of respect for those bows and arrows and that relationship building, they gave horses to the Ponca. And these Poncas, like I said, they knew how big this horse was because a warrior on horseback, he was quick, he was fast. When that hunter went out to, to hunt, he could bring more food back for the people. So out of respect for that horse, these Poncas, they made songs for these horses. What I was told by uh, one of my one of my uh, elders said that these horses, when these songs were being sung, these horses would recognize these songs and their ears would pop up. And these horses, they knew that these songs were being sung for them, so they started to dance. And they said that there were some little boys that started to imitate that horse. And that grandma at that time, the grandma said, hey, knock that off. That song that belongs to those horse, that horse, you don't do that. So many, many years passed, and when the Wild West show started, and they had to come up with something else besides that war dance, they came back to those those boys that did that, that imitated the horse. They said, we're going to sing these songs, and we want you to dance like that horse again. So they said that, but we're going to bring back some of the things that we wore during the original war dance, like the feathers and the bustles, you know, the headdress. And uh, so that's kind of how it started. However, another story that was added to that was uh, they said that whenever they came out and they dressed that war dance style, like uh, the things that they wore in battle, they say that the, the European people that came to see the show, they were terrified and they took off running. They were scared of what they seen. So the grandpas at that time, they said, you guys need to dress more beautiful. You have to dress that it's more appealing to the, the European. So that's when we started putting in bright colors and started painting ourselves in a pretty way, you know. That way uh, we don't 
terrify the, the, the uh, Europeans. So that's a, a, a brief description of how that fancy dance started. You know, they always say like, uh, we go to Powell and they'll say, oh, this is old style, you know, dance old style, you know. Back in, you know, the, the era before me, you know, which was uh, like the 70s, the 60s and 70s, and even before that time, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of those guys. And they all had different styles, you know? So to say like, oh, that's old style, is trying to say like, well, that's the only guy that's dancing right. Where this guy here had his, he was a champion as well, and he had his own style. So it's evolved throughout the years. And uh, to say that it's gotten worse or gotten better, you can't say that because everybody, and we're expressing ourselves, our own individual style. The story that I was told when it comes to the bustles, that is something that we wore during that original war dance. And that bustle, it represents a battlefield. They say when the creator is looking down on the battlefield, that battlefield would be shaped in a circular pattern. And at that time, what they would do is they would uh, use eagle, hawk, buzzard, crow, and sometimes owl feathers. And the reason why they chose those feathers, they say, is because after a battle, you could find those, uh, those birds feasting on the enemy, and they would decorate themselves with it. They would uh, give those feathers to individuals that did great deeds in battle, maybe counting coup on the enemy, or maybe stealing an enemy's horse. So that's the reason why they would wear that, you know? They would put that, we didn't wear it into battle. We would, it would, it's kind of like uh, when our warriors come home and they have all those bars across their chest. Now, that same thing. You know, it represents that same thing. That's what the bustle represents. You know. When it comes to the head roach, it shows a sign of aggression. What they say is that um, when you encounter a porcupine in the wild, the very first thing that it'll do, it'll throw up its guard here. And it's telling you, don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. And whenever that porcupine, you mess with it, then you find out what the porcupine quills are. Well, when our warriors would go out, they would wear this head roach, this headdress, and that's what they are telling the, the individuals that they encounter, don't mess with me. So that's something that we wear as war dancers now is that head roach, it comes back to that original war dance. During the world championship um, that was held in Haskell, that he actually tied with uh, Gus McDonald. And the world championship could have been held at a different place. Now, when you go to Ponca, you know, many times they say that that's the world championship, which it rightfully is. The story that was told to me is that uh, many years ago, there was uh, so many kids that went to school at Haskell that left, and they went to go to fight in uh, World War I. And their, rel their relatives that went to school at Haskell, and their friends and their family, they seen all of their, their brothers leaving to go to fight in World War I, and they wanted to honor them. So the kids at Haskell, they put money together and they were they built the very first World War I memorial at Haskell at the Coliseum. Is that uh, it was supposed to be a 45-minute dedication ceremony, and Calvin Calvin Coolidge came in, and he's the one that dedicated it. And this 45-minute event turned into a four-day uh, event. Many many dances were done there, and there were many many champion fancy war dancers from all over the United States that went to school there. And being that Native Americans, we've always been very competitive. They wanted to see who the best actually was. So during this time, during this event, they gathered and they said, we're going to decide once and for all who the best is. And whoever wins this, they'll be able to take this trophy home and they will be able to say that they are the world champion and that's where the world championship will be held at from there on. During this time, this is when Gus McDonald and George Allen tied and Gus McDonald was the one that won and took that championship home. So you see all of these kids that are being brought out to this arena, they're experiencing the things that, I, I seen that on Facebook where somebody said, you know, that, um, you know, we are what our, our grandparents prayed for. We're, we are we're living what our, uh, our elders, our ancestors prayed for, we're still existing. That's what they wanted. And that's what our kids now, they're doing that, you know, they're surviving and they're, they're being exposed and we know that they're going to be okay. You know, we know that our people is going to be okay. And by doing these things, I know for my people as well, when it came to power and stuff like that, it brought our culture back. You know, it brought it to where our people were proud to be Indian again. 
And by doing that, it brought back some of our things that our tribal people used to do a long time ago as well with like stickball and stuff like that, you know. So I, this, there's nothing but beauty out there, you know. Take care of your bodies, you know. Take care of your bodies. When you have an injury, take time for it to heal. That's on the, that's on the body part. But one of the things that I see is uh, one of the biggest things is go and talk to the elders. Go and sit, and, and it doesn't even have to be fancy. Just go talk to a grandma. Go and talk to a grandpa. Go and talk to like the arena director, because they're that generation is going to be the one that carries us through. They're going to make us stronger. You know, fancy dance. It's um, the most, I would say, the most modern type of dance that we have now when it comes to um, our men's categories, and it's a very fast pace. Um, originally, the movements came from the horse. But because of competition, because our people want to stand out more than the next, that's another reason why you see all the bright colors. And it's to stand out, it's to, to look our best. And we look our best to make the people feel good.